Welcome folks. Uh, what I have for you today is uh, an HEI coil or in long words it's high energy ignition or high energy ignition uh, coil. Um, HEI is the short term. Uh, a lot of the advanced guys that work on a lot of cars and stuff will just call it an HEI. So if you hear, um, especially dealing with General Motors products, uh, Chevys, Buicks and whatnot, then you'll hear them say HEI and that's what this is. It's a high energy ignition coil and it sits on top of the uh, distributor cap. Okay, and then there's a cover on top of it. Just as a brief uh, overview. Now let's get into measuring this thing. What this video is all about is to see if uh, the two coils contained within this epoxy filled uh, housing here are, are both good. And we're going to measure them both with an ohmmeter. Okay, so I got it all set up here so we can get a better look at it and steady things up a little bit. Okay, so basically what you really have here is two coils, like I was saying, there's two coils within this uh, center unit here, the epoxy filled unit, and the two on the end here for your primary coil, and it's a low ohms reading. I'll be getting into that in detail in just a minute. And to get the secondary uh, coil or reading, you'd attach it to these two points. Uh, this is just like basically a ground wire, if you will. And it's one end of the coil on the high side or the secondary side. And what you see in the middle here is a, um, it looks like a piece of steel that's inside this plastic looking housing here. And that's the output part. Um, if you were to look inside your distributor cap with this installed in the distributor cap, you'd see a carbon button on there as you're looking down inside the distributor cap. So you got to remember when you're testing this and you're going to get the readings that I'm going to get here um, and especially the specifications for your particular HEI coil um, then you have to really pay attention as to whether it's it's like this bare without anything connected also the the carbon button can affect your readings too um, there's resistance in that carbon button as well so you'll you'll have to check on that to see what the reading would be with if you measure it when it was installed in the cap but this is the bare coil nothing else to go with it so let's get started then. The very first thing you do, um, I'm going to do the uh, low ohms first and show you to check your um, ohm meter in, in case um, it's miscalibrated. So I'll put it on the low reading on this one. It's uh, up to 0 to 200 ohms and you just connect the two test leads like so. Grind them in, they're nice and good, get a connection and see if you get a reading out of this. A good meter or one that you can adjust should say all zeros on it. This says decimals, just decimal 3 there. And uh, so what we're going to have to do, since this meter is non-adjustable, and uh, I actually did t test this meter, and the meter is out of calibration because I jump jumpered it with a, a heavy piece of wire down without the test uh, cables in here, and the meter actually shows a 0.3 without the uh, the test cables and the solid jumper there, so the, the meter is out of whack here. So I have to sub subtract, sorry, subtract 0.3 from the reading we get on the low side only. Now when we do the high ohms readings on the secondary coil, we will disregard that because it's just a small amount and we're dealing with thousands of ohms at that point. But for the low reading, you can just basically take that 0.3 and subtract it for what we're reading here. So it doesn't matter which polarity you use there when doing the ohms, it's just basically a, a coil wrapped up and they're a fine wire. And uh, I'll, I'll show you as we go along here. Okay, so um, the reading we're after on low, I got some notes jotted down off the, to the side of the video here. They're kind of a generic thing. I, I looked up a bunch of specifications, sort of averaged them. So I, I got to stress uh, stress again that you always look up the specifications for the type of coil you have. If you have a high performance aftermarket coil, there's a good chance that these these ohms readings probably won't even uh, be close, because it all depends on those the, the gauge of the wire being the thickness, and the number of turns that are in there are going to affect the actual ohm reading. Okay, on the low side we should have probably a little over zero and uh, no more than about one ohm and that's on the primary side so as you can see on the meter here like I say I should uh, reiterate this here too or repeat it grind them in there real good make sure there's no oil on the connections everything is uh, not you know if the numbers start moving on you that means that uh, you basically got oxidation some oil or a bad uh, connection somewhere so even with the meter you can also um, make sure that the connections there, especially if they've been sitting for years, is that you give them a little bit of a wiggle and grind off any oxidation that may have uh, happened. So we got decimal 7 there. Now remember the meter is miscalibrated by 0.3. So I have to subtract decimal 3 off that 7. So that gives us decimal 4. Now that's a pretty good reading uh, according to what I've got here. Like I say, uh, it should show a little bit over 0, but no more than 1 ohm at its maximum on the low reading for the primary coil. So that's well within specifications for the, the numbers I have jotted down off to the side here. 
and like I'll just mention it now too with uh, I've noticed with these ohms readings on this when nothing else is connected you can reverse the uh, the leads on there and you should get the same reading okay still the 0.7 minus 0.3 equals 0.4 ohms so we're good on the primary side primary coils of two outer ones and now for the secondary side um, this is one end I believe of the uh, the secondary coil in there so you gotta make sure that's connected and we're just going to grind away in here and make sure that it makes a good connection. And also you got to bump the meter up because we're probably going to, uh, the specifications here show um, uh, anywhere from 3,000 ohms to 30,000 ohms. And that's a pretty broad range, um, you know, 27,000 ohms difference. So 3,000 to 30,000. So we've got to bump this meter up. It only goes as high as 200 ohms. And we need to something that will go to, um, oh, 20, 000, we'll try 20,000 ohms or 20K go up two notches to 20,000 and see what it does and I'll even move it around once we make the connection here and see what we end up with so I got 8,400 okay and I'll go up to the 200k or 200,000 ohms same thing but less de decimal points to the right so we'll back down here we can even go to the 2k or 2,000 and we just show a 1 meaning we're out of range so now we're back in there and we got more decimal points to the right. So this is the uh, scale I'll be using is uh, 20k or 20,000 ohms and under. Okay, so uh, like I say, anywhere between 3,000 and 30,000 ohms is telling us that the secondary coil in this particular HEI coil is okay. So like I say, uh, 8,400 is good. So, and I'll even do this with this as well. I'll reverse the pl um, polarity on the leads. Now we're getting a little bit loose there in the connection with the alligator clips. Make sure they're snug. That's another thing about these ones. They, they unscrew from the actual um, thing, so you got to make sure they're tight. If they're loose, that'll give you a false reading as well. If you have this particular style of uh, test probe leads uh, for your ohmmeter, multimeter. So same thing, 8.4. Like I say, you don't have to worry about that uh, decimal 3 at this high, high range. It's... Uh, it's very very tiny so it's not even an issue really so 8400 is somewhere between 3000 and 30000 ohms that shows our secondary coil within this uh, ATI unit is functional and uh, as far as the readings go this coil tests okay but I'll just mention a few things um, while I'm at it uh, while I was bending these things to make the video this copper wire that gets crimped right into this uh, this metal uh, spade fitting here that goes down inside the distributor cap once it's installed it actually broke off and uh, so what I did is I polished up the copper wire that was left there and uh, opened up the crimping and removed the uh, the bad part of the wire I believe and then uh, cleaned it all up with some flux and used some rosin core solder and soldered it up again and we're good to go so always check these connections here too any of the crimping be very suspicious of any crimping especially if it's been in a moist environment you've got a lot of rain or Condensation uh, where your vehicle uh, is uh, used. Uh, always check all these in here. Um, I prefer solder myself. I know I got a positive connection at that point, but to each his own. That's just my two cents worth. Okay, so that's basically it for uh, testing the um, the HEI or high energy ignition coil in a General Motors uh, distributor cap type model. Uh, coil in the cap is another. Um, phrase that you'll hear thrown around there when it applies to the HEI system, distributor that is. Okay folks, there you have it. There's my video for today. Hope you liked it. So be safe, take care, and have yourself a nice day. Bye for now.